What are the best and worst Star Wars TV shows of all time? Well, in this video, I'm gonna rank every single Star Wars TV show on a list from S to F tier. And at the end, I'm gonna pick one show as the best of the best, raising it to S tier plus, and one as the worst of the worst, knocking it down to F minus. For your favorite show to not end up in F tier, it needs to be entertaining first and foremost, and consistently good and coherent throughout each episode. And since The Acolyte just came out, that seems like a good place to start. So, is it entertaining? Well, that's up to the viewer themselves, but for me, The Acolyte was not fun to watch at all. Aside from a select few fight scenes, like Kamir's duel with the Jedi, there wasn't much going for it, and with the constant interruptions and cuts to other characters, even the best moments lagged a little bit. Some episodes were literally just the characters walking around which ruined the pacing and any potential for consistency with the show. Okay, but was it coherent? Not exactly. I mean, Kiati Mundi was aware of the Sith the entire time, but I guess he got amnesia and forgot by the time of the Phantom Menace. And then we get moments like this. Why did this Roden guy sabotage Soul in the middle of the chase? Whose side is he on anyway? And of course, we can't forget Disney throwing Darth Plagueis into the show only to look like a pedophile. I can only imagine how confusing that was for non-Star Wars fans. If you like this show, that's great, I'm happy for you. But objectively, I've got to put this show in F tier hell. The show that came out right before the Acolyte was Tales of the Empire, the sequel to Tales of the Jedi. I love the animation style for this series, and the shots of Grievous invading Dothamir were peak Star Wars. Other than that, the show doesn't have much going for it. The two main character arcs are fairly weak. Barriss's arc starts strong, but then she randomly flips to the light side. I also felt no personal connection with Morgan Elsbeth at all whatsoever. Aside from Thrawn's brief appearance, there wasn't anything entertaining about that arc. D tier. However, I really enjoyed the storytelling from Tales of the Jedi. Choosing to follow Ahsoka was an easy call, but Dooku was phenomenal. Dooku is just so underutilized in the movies and in the Clone Wars show, so it's great to see his character fleshed out a bit more. This one's an A tier for me. Speaking of the Clone Wars, let's talk about the Clone Wars show more specifically the Samurai Jack version from 2003. This series fleshes out yet another underrated character, General Grievous. It's probably the only piece of Star Wars content that really does Grievous justice. Not to mention that the scaling of this show is awesome. Each battle has thousands and thousands of ships and troops going into battle. I think it also depicts clones the right way. They're professional soldiers first and foremost. It's better for us fans if they're more emotional like the clones from the newer Clone Wars, but let's face it, troops bred for battle are probably gonna end up more like these guys. There's really nothing wrong with this series, except that it's just 2D animation. It's gonna join Tales of the Jedi in A tier. Unfortunately, there's a lot wrong with the Ahsoka show. It's yet another broken lightsaber expose. Sabine survives a stab straight through the stomach. Speaking of which, Sabine is probably the main issue I have with the show. She basically just picks up the force. With almost zero training, she's immediately in battle, blocking shots behind her head. That's just bad writing. Sabine gets way too much screen time instead of Ahsoka, who's supposed to be the main character. Sabine also acts way different than she did in Rebels, and honestly I can say the same for many of the other Rebels characters that pop up in the show, like Ezra. The appearances from what? Anakin and Rex are just enough to save the show, bringing it up to D tier. There's nothing saving the Book of Boba Fett though. It may contain the single worst scene in all of Star Wars with the Vespa scene chase. Someone commented, this is like watching old people on mobility scooters chase each other around the grocery store. I mean, who are these people? What are they wearing? This doesn't even look like Star Wars. It looks like some Disney descendant spy kid monstrosity. Boba Fett himself is also terrible. He's suddenly a benevolent leader and caretaker, nothing like his old self. Even Cad Bane, the only bright spot in the show, gets killed off. Sorry Boba, I don't know if I have the strength to do it, but I'm putting you in F tier. Another major problem with the show is that it's basically a gimmick using The Mandalorian. You have to watch Boba Fett to know what's happening in The Mandalorian Season 3. With the book of Boba Fett setting it up, The Mandalorian Season 3 was doomed to fail. I'm ranking Season 3 separately from the rest of The Mandalorian because it just doesn't hold up compared to the previous two seasons. It's quite literally a different show entirely. It's like the book of Boba Fett rubbed off onto Mando. The writing is much worse in this season, and the cinematography and costuming sucks. The episodes ramble along with little meaning, and we get a cameo from Lizzo of all things. This is an easy D tier for me, which is sad because the first two seasons of The Mandalorian are some of the best Star Wars TV ever. It's gonna be our first S tier. I think this show really mastered how to put Star Wars into episodes. Each episode contains its own story, but the larger story remains connected as well. The mystery of who the Mandalorian is behind the helmet is a great plot device for the first season, as well as protecting Grogu from the Empire. The second season is different, but solid in its own way. The appearance from Ahsoka was a appropriate and bringing in Luke was downright beautiful. I appreciate these appearances because they enhance the show and the characters without over relying on them. Sadly, in my opinion, that's exactly what the Bad Batch does, to its detriment. Between appearances from Cad Bane and Ventress to Saul Gerrera and the Delta Squad, I feel like the Bad Batch definitely had an over-reliance on legacy characters, particularly ones from the Clone Wars. Star Wars has always had an issue of being such an ironically small galaxy, with the same characters meeting over and over. I wish the Bad Batch could have moved away from that and done its own thing more. 
And to its credit, the Bad Batch does do its own thing, and it does it well. Well enough to grant it a spot in the A tier for sure, but no higher. Okay, I'm gonna bet you haven't heard of this next show. It's called Star Wars Visions. What's it about? Well, it's a Star Wars show, basically answering the question, what if Star Wars was made as a Japanese anime? Seeing lightsaber duels with anime-style over-the-top powers is something I never knew I needed to see. You'll see familiar sights like Tatooine and Imperial Star Destroyers, but with massive twists and story-breaking moments that make it non-canon. I'm not even an anime fan myself, but the episodes I did watch were a blast. We need more people in charge making passion projects like this one instead of Leslie Headlands and Kathleen Kennedy's. This show is a solid one, but there are a few weak episodes along the way. B tier. Another solid show that's beautifully animated is Star Wars Resistance. A lot of people balk at the title. Surely any sequels related content is gonna suck. In any other instance, they'd be right, except for this show. While it is geared for kids, the show does its job well. It stays in its lane. Instead of any cliches saving the galaxy moments, there's more down-to-earth, realistic challenges for the heroes. Surprisingly, there's very few appearances from important legacy characters, and the First Order barely appears until the second season. Like I said though, it is a kid's show at the end of the day. There's a lot of annoying slapstick humor and extremely low-stakes kitty themes that make the show hard to watch for me. Considering that's its purpose though, I can't complain. Resistance deserves a solid C tier ranking. Nothing more, nothing less. Just because it's a kid's show doesn't mean you can throw any conception of a good story out the window, which is exactly what Disney did with Young Jedi Adventures. Sure, it's a kid's show, it's supposed to be dumb to an extent, but this show is just downright weird. Every main character in the show is a child. Essentially, kids are filling a Jedi Knight role, which is a little crazy. No masters in sight. Even the villains are children. One of the only adult presences is Yoda from the High Republic era, who is completely out of character. He constantly gives very non-Jedi-like advice in an attempt to portray real-life lessons for the kid viewers. There's also quite a bit of the Disney message with regards to sexuality being pushed with this one. I personally have no problem with that, but it's definitely odd for a show geared to preschoolers. Normally, like with The Resistance, I'd give a kid's show a pass, but I can't with this one. Young Jedi Adventures belongs in the good old F tier. The Clone Wars for example, started out as a kid's show, and it was great. While seasons 1 and 2 had some weird childish moments, and the animation was often janky, it did a great job of developing relationships between the characters, particularly with Anakin and Ahsoka. I think those two seasons earned a solid B tier on this list. From season 3 onward, the animation improved drastically. Ahsoka's chin finally started to look normal, and we started to get phase 2 clones as well. The show's themes became darker with each passing episode, which I really enjoyed. We got some of the best arcs in all of Star Wars, like the Umbara campaign, Maul and Savage on Mandalore, and the feud between Anakin and Rush Clovis, which is my personal favorite. The show is amazing because of how it builds up George Lucas's characters. The motivations for why and how Obi-Wan and Anakin acted in Revenge of the Sith feel much more justified. When re-watching the movies after the show, everything is enhanced by it. It also gives a role to lesser characters in the movies, like Jedi Council members Plo Koon and Kit Fisto. The Clone Wars gave us original characters like Ahsoka, Rex, Fives, Cad Bane, Ventress, and more Darth Maul. I could go on and on about the amazing characters, but most most important of all, the show really brings the clones to life. They're individuals too, after all, with names and identities thrust into a war against their will, but they love their Jedi generals and serve them without question anyway. This is probably the easiest S tier of my life. To my surprise, we got wow. to see even more of the clones in Star Wars Rebels. Rebels is an interesting case. On the one hand, it falls victim to the same problem that the Bad Batch had, bringing back Clone Wars characters like Ahsoka, Rex, and Maul. But overall, the show stayed focused on its main purpose, which was following the Ghost crew. Seeing Ezra mature through the show's seasons was very satisfying. Kanan displays a more realistic version of Kenobi. He's not perfect, and his flaws are relatable, but he still tries to be as good as he can anyway. His relationship with Hera is probably one of the best written real relationships in any media, let alone Star Wars. All in all, the show is just really one big family story, that being the Ghost Crew, and it ties itself up beautifully. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the show introduced us to the Inquisitors and brought Thrawn to canon, so obviously I love both of those decisions. Rather than splitting the show up by season and ranking it that way, I'm just gonna rank it collectively. To be honest, the show had a rocky start, and I thought it did too much with Maul. I also really didn't like that Vader and Ahsoka meant. I don't know, call me crazy, but I just didn't like seeing Vader being used as a plot device in this show. Anyway, that means Rebels is gonna go in the B tier. Darth Vader also got overused in Kenobi, but it was even worse than in Rebels. There's a lot to dislike about Kenobi. 
Reva is annoying as can be, the Grand Inquisitor survives a direct lightsaber stab, not to mention the incredibly incompetent bounty hunters being unable to catch a child running in the woods, or the incredibly dark scenery and shaky camera work for the duels. Everything about this show just felt like one massive, contrived nostalgia bait rolled into one, and they were so obsessed with the nostalgia themselves that they forgot how to hold a camera and write a dang show. The stakes are so incredibly low that there's nothing to care about. Of course, Vader and Obi-Wan will both survive after any confrontation. Of course, Child Leia will make it too. Wait, actually, is this entire show just about a child getting kidnapped by her father's employees who just wanted to find Obi-Wan? What on earth? Not to mention that Reva thinks the best way to lure out a legendary Clone Wars general is to take the daughter of a senator that Kenobi happened to have a connection to a decade earlier. And Bail Organa's only option is to ask Obi-Wan for help, even though he's the most influential person on one of the richest planets in the entire galaxy? And at the very end, Obi-Wan has defeated Vader and realized his friend is completely dead. And what does he do? Leave Vader alive to torment the galaxy and kill thousands more innocent victims for years to come. Yeah, there's no hope for this dumpster fire. The Obi-Wan I know wouldn't make the same mistake twice. This show should have been a movie. Instead of being a movie, it just locked up its spot in the F tier. Somehow, some way, while the events of Kenobi were going down, we had an S tier show happening, and it's none other than Andor. I really enjoyed this show because I'm a huge fan of Rogue One. It's probably the second best Star Wars movie of all time in my opinion. So going in, I was just ready for more Rogue One, and I could not have been more surprised. But in its own way, unlike any other Star Wars show, Andor is probably one of the best. A lot of the themes and plot elements in Andor are completely unlike Star Wars. There's a lot of realism in this show. Good characters do bad things. Bad characters have a lot of depth and relatable motivations. It makes the Empire make sense, especially for the average person. For once, unlike most Star Wars, there's a ton of nuance to everything. It also has one of my favorite arcs in all of Star Wars, that being when Cassian gets put in prison. I don't think I've ever been more invested in a piece of Star Wars content than those episodes. The writing and set design was top notch as well, and I have to give credit where credit is due. Tony Gilroy is the man behind all of it. Disney better bring him back, because he's the only chance we have at any good Star Wars shows in the future. Now really quickly, I'm going to take us all the way back to the first ever Star Wars TV shows. They're two animated series called Droids and Ewoks. Only old heads remember these shows, so let me explain. Wait, so what does that make me? Basically, Droids is an animated show following C-3PO and R2-D2 on random adventures fighting for the Rebellion. Its companion show Ewoks follows the Ewoks as the Empire moves in to build the second Death Star. Both shows are extremely well animated, especially when considering they were made back in the 80s. They hold up really well today. That being said, the writing is very haphazard, like any 80s TV show. At the end of the day, both shows do their job well, which is primarily to entertain kids, but also bolster the overall story of the original trilogy as well. Both get to be in C tier. Alright, now that we've ranked every single show, which is the worst of all? We've got four F tier choices. The Acolyte, Book of Boba Fett, Kenobi, and Young Jedi Adventures. And the winner is, drumroll please, Kenobi. I know most of you are probably screaming, it's the Acolyte, but here's why I think Kenobi is the worst. For starters, the Acolyte is the first Star Wars show completely outside of the Skywalker timeline. It has no legacy characters other than the briefest of appearances from Kiati Mundi and Yoda. So for that, it has my respect. It may be a dumpster fire, but it is doing something that no other piece of Star Wars content ever has done. What about Boba Fett? Well, it heavily featured Cad Bane and the Mandalorian, which made the show significantly better than its friends in the F tier. And at the end of the day, Young Jedi Adventures is just a toddler show, so I can only hate on it so much. Kenobi, by virtue of simply existing, ruins a lot of what Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope tried to convey. Leia and Obi-Wan weren't supposed to meet at all, let alone Obi-Wan and Vader. If you consider Kenobi to be canon, then you just can't look at the movies the same. It makes everything so much worse. It also solidified Disney's plan for breaking the lightsaber, with multiple characters surviving stab wounds. Pretty much anything I can conceivably think about for the show sucked. Okay, I digress. Enough about Kenobi. Which is the best show? For me, it's a very close contest between The Clone Wars and Andor. That's because they're both very different shows doing very different things, but I have to go with The Clone Wars here. Personally, for me, it was a big part of my childhood. In the grand scheme of things, I think it's objectively a pretty awesome show, especially when you consider how many episodes got made. It only builds up the Star Wars universe, and it doesn't take away. Which Star Wars show is the best and worst in your opinion? Let me know in the comments.